Welcome to Revitalize and Replant with Mark Clifton, where we equip pastors to take their churches from declining to thriving by pointing them to a new future and a new hope. Join us weekly for encouragement and practical advice in your pastoring journey. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> Are you here to worship? Amen. <laughs> How many times have you gone to a church and you've heard the service start like that? And you know, I, I'm the kind of person, I just want to get up and throat punch somebody you know, for, for that. It, that doesn't lead me to worship. Uh, good morning. I'm, this is uh, Revitalize and Replant with, with Mark Clifton. I'm Dan Hurst. There's Mark Halleck. And we're going to talk uh, today about... <laughs> There are things that happen in our churches, and it's because we try to create energy, and we, we try to get everybody really on the same page, and, and so we have some guy yucking it up on the, on the stage because it's, it's about bringing everybody into this, uh, this branch and show for Jesus, and, and we completely start on the wrong foot. Don't we? And today we're going to talk about things. We, this is actually, uh, Jared Wilson uh, wrote something like this, and we thought we got to use this because these are things that we wish worship leaders would just yeah. stop. This is saying. Jared Wilson's top 10 list, right, from the home office in Wahoo, Nebraska. His top 10 list of things I wish worship leaders would stop saying. Now, you know what? As we read down this list, you're going to hear many things if you're a worship leader you've said i've not been a worship leader but i've led music once in a while and i've been a pastor forever and i have said many of these oh things. i have too yeah and yeah. sometimes you say them without even thinking about it which tells you how dumb they are whenever you say something in worship without thinking about it but these are top 10 things i wish worship leaders would stop saying now listen okay don't get all bent out of shape there's no, a, there's, get there, out of shape. No, this is, there's some humor in this. This is lighthearted. That's right. You know, we're not coming at you saying, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're going to be a reprobate if you do these things. Or we're not talking about the regulated principle and, you know, we're going to excommunicate you. And it's just kind of fun and lighthearted. But at the same time, we want you to think about why you're saying what you're saying. And, and the impact that these simple phrases that we hear all the time, mm-hmm. what do they really mean? And how do they really affect people? All right, that's what we want you to do. Because actually, we would like you to stop saying that. Yeah, frankly, that, that's the truth. That's the truth. Yeah. But we're just not mad about it yet. <laughs> right, okay? right, right, yeah. right, right, right. So here we go. Number ten. All right, Mark, you deal with this. Okay, one. Here, here we go. go. You ready? Here, number ten. Are we ready to have fun this morning? Hey. There you go. Hey, you know what? You yucked it up just right. <laughs> and I love what Jared Wilson says. The answer is probably not. <laughs> the truth is. When you welcome at the start of the music time, it tells somebody where your head is at. Nobody Mm. goes to church to have a bad time, of Mm. course, right? (laughs) I'm sure. And some people may actually go to have fun. But actually, that's not the point of worship. That's right. It's not about having fun, right? It's not about crushing your music set or rocking it out for Jesus or the band's really hot today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, our friend Joe Kreider... He's the head of the music school at Southwestern Seminary, and uh, he makes it abundantly clear the Spirit of God does not come through a great guitar lick. Right? Uh, I mean, yeah, that, that's yeah. not what moves us to yeah. worship. It's not a great guitar lick. Yep. And uh, so, yeah, are we ready to have fun this morning? Number nine. Wait, wait. I got to oh, go go comment go on ahead. this real quick because yeah, 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 yeah. I was in a church just, <laughs> <laughs> just a few months ago. And uh, the church had their band and they had their singers, you know, I mean, the whole thing was just wound up. And, and I'm sitting there going, okay, this is not my way of worshiping. Actually, I didn't even know some of the music, most of the music yeah. that they were singing. They included some rap, which I was not familiar with. Interesting. And, uh, and <laughs> you? Yeah, I know. No I know strange. <laughs> and somebody, I don't know who it was, some staff member walked out. And, and now this is a... Uh, pardon me, but a culturally white church. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the guy walks out on the stage and he says, oh, man, the band be kicking it today. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. And I thought, this oh, is painful. my stars. That's you know, painful. That's painful. We, we've got to be very careful about the image oh, that we man. convey when we when we are trying to bring people to the foot of the cross. Amen. You know? Amen. That's right. Okay, you ready for number nine? Number nine. Number nine. How's everybody feeling this morning? <laughs> Man, 
listen, I got just one thing to say about several of these. Yeah. Like, the worst thing you can do is be a cheese ball oh, man. in worship. I mean, younger generations are just allergic to this. Like, I, I remember on my sabbatical a few years ago, like, we went to a lot of different churches. And I remember going to one SBC church and— and this is literally, this is what it was, I mean, this was like. I mean, the worship guy comes out and, how's everybody doing this morning? Are you feeling good? I mean, this was his line. You know, you sing better when you smile. <laughs> and I will never forget my son on my left and my daughter on my right looking at me like, Dad, what is going on right now? <laughs> this is like the worst ever. So how's everybody feeling? And I, I, love what, I love what Jared says. Well, if I really want to stretch to justify that statement, I could say you're asking the congregation to self-reflect on their spiritual condition. <laughs> yeah, but that's not. But what that's they're... not what we're doing here. <laughs> How's everybody feeling? Are we having fun this morning? Number three. Well, you can do better than that. <laughs> oh, I've that, heard that so yeah. many times. I, I'm going like, out there and go. Good morning. How are you? Uh, you can do, uh, amen, Amy. You can do better than that. Oh man, nagging people in their singing is yeah. not going to help them sing. That's spiritual leadership. Yeah, that's there, right. Buddy. That's right. That's right. Come on, you can do a lot better than that. Or along with that, yeah. the twin to you can better than that is I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Uh, that's number seven. I can't hear you. <laughs> Wilson says, well, maybe turn the volume down. We can't hear us either. <laughs> <laughs> Which, oh, even though we're being humorous, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, again, our friend Joe Kreider makes it clear <laughs> that if your band and your musicians are so loud that the congregation mm. can't be heard singing, then turn it yeah, down. down. That's right. Turn it down. Hey. You know, there's another element to this, too, and because if you've got people in your congregation that are over the age of 60, it's mm. it's not that they're cantankerous or cranky. It actually hurts them. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah, physically, yeah. it hurts them. And I have I have people, you know, at our church that just say, "Look, I'd really like to go to the worship, and but it hurts." Yeah, yeah. you know. And you've got to be sensitive. To yeah. That. And basically, when when you can't hear people sing, or when they're not singing, you know, one time I I, I did a, a, a we had a, a church. I was working with a church. I had a really good. Comp- bunch of musicians they really were very good and the music was really you would call it quality for a church and um but the congregation just wasn't singing yeah. but it didn't seem to bother the praise band because they were doing a good job mm-hmm. right and mm-hmm. they'd pick the songs and they liked what they liked and a lot of times the songs they picked you know kind of emphasized the guitar lick or a, a yeah. certain bridge that these people could sing so one time i took i took the iphone and i put it on the tripod and instead of pointing it to the band i pointed it to the congregation and recorded it and i showed it to the worship team oh. and i said nobody's singing with you mm-hmm. wow. and it was like well you know that's well, they should so, no 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 that, that's not the point yeah that's the right. point is if they're not singing you're not leading correctly right. that's right exactly. and the reason they're not singing is you, your band's too loud mm-hmm. you're singing songs that have bridges and things that they can't follow yeah it's hard you've got follow, breaks right? in there where you got guitar licks they don't know whether to when to when come back in it's not congregational singing and listen if, if your people can't be heard, then as Joe Kreider says, turn the music down. Turn the volume down so that they can be heard, all right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Number six, and oh. just to go back, number 10, <laughs> are we having fun this morning? Number nine, how's everybody feeling? Number eight, you can do better than that. Number seven, I can't hear you. <laughs> and number six, introducing to him, here's an oldie we dusted off. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what Wilson says about this one. He says, please don't apologize for leading us in the rare song that is theologically rich and doctrinally <laughs> solid. Apologize for not leading us in them more often. No, they might not. You might not say, here's an old one where we dust it off. But yeah. I've heard people say something along the line, we're going to sing a hymn now. And so yeah. that's really unusual yeah. Yeah. and kind of rare. Almost apologetic Almost about Almost apologetic. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have heard them say, here's an oldie but a goodie. Have yeah. you? Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's, oh, man. Yeah, yeah. You know. I love that. Don't apologize for singing an old one. <laughs> apologize for not singing them enough. Okay, here's number five. Yes. Rock and worship. Oh, yeah, there yeah. it is. There it is. Yeah, uh, we'd, I, be I, it. yeah. <laughs> we'd be kicking uh, it. Yeah. We'd be kicking it. We'd be kicking it. Yeah. <laughs> J- uh, Jared says, I know you got a good drummer and amps that all the way go to 11. <laughs> but referring to the church music as rocking or rocking it out 
is somewhere in the category of fanny packs <laughs> and duck face selfies. <laughs> It's true. It oh, is true. Man. And you mentioned the cheese factor. Oh, man. And listen, I know, please hear me and hear me loud and hear me clear. The people in your congregation can go to any venue in yes. the city tonight yes. and hear music far better than you're going to have on Sunday morning. Totally. Absolutely. So don't think you're going to impress anybody that's with right. your. That's not the point, yes. right? Yes. And and so it's not like, hey, we got the best music in ta- on Sunday yeah. morning. Yeah. We got the most rock. And sometimes, pastors, it can be a point of pride that your worship team is that good and that gifted and that drummer's that yeah. good. And if he's that good, you need to let him play. But, yeah, again, I, even I see it on social media posts. Pastors will say, man, the, the band was so good today. The yeah. worship set was so strong today. Yeah. It's like, who cares? Yeah. Were, your, were your members singing, singing today? Were they worshiping? That's exactly Were they right. worshiping? You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not going to a concert. That's right. And, by the way, when you when – you, even on social media and on your platform, when you really when you praise the music of the band, I I believe you're downplaying the singing. Yeah. What you want to say is, man, the congregation sang That's so right. well today. That's right. That's we, right. We heard people sing about God today. Because actually, as we said before, yeah. when 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 you you sing not only to praise the Lord and glorify Him, what you're called to do, but you sing to encourage the person next That's to right, you to one another. So right. you sing to one another. Maybe the person next to you just had a diagnosis last week of mm. stage four cancer, yeah. and and they're having a hard time singing, but you're singing. That's right. And and they can hear you sing. Yep. Or perhaps you know you've just had a child that you found out is totally reprobate, but the the elderly lady behind you is singing with her full voice, That's and that right. encourages you. Yes. Well, the scripture tells us to sing to one another That's in right. songs That's and right. spiritual That's hymns. Right. Exactly. You know, and so it's we're not just singing to the Lord. We're yeah. we're singing to encourage our brothers and sisters. All right. And then then this is. This is Richard and Henry Blackaby's. This is where they land. This is where they live. This statement here. Number four, quit saying, Lord, be with us today. Lord, we invite you to be here today. Yeah, what would Blackaby say about that? Well, Blackaby would say he's always here. Where is he? Out in the parking lot waiting to come in? Has he decided of all the places (laughs) in the universe where he is omniscient, he's not going to be here today? Mm -hmm. And you got to beg him to be here? Of course not. He's always there. Mm -hmm. And I like what what Wilson says here. this is the worship leader's equivalent of asking Jesus into your heart. <laughs> I think I know what the phrase means, but it reveals something about our thinking related to worship. For instance, uh-huh. is it true that God is summoned by our worship, mm. or is it actually the other way around? Mm-hmm. He calls us. We then respond in worship. God is in the genie, and worship isn't like rubbing a golden lamp. We don't cause him to come. We don't ask him to come. Yeah. Nor is he a cosmic butler to be summoned up. We don't invite the Lord into our space like he doesn't already own it and he isn't already there. Amen. And this is a strong theological issue. It is. Mm -hmm. So don't ever say, Lord, be with us today as though this is where we belong and, you know, we're going to invite you in here. No, 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 no. He is everywhere. He invites us to be with him. That's not a small matter. (laughs) No, that's right. And the other thing, too, is that we're going to perform to please God. You know, no, we don't perform yeah, yeah, to please yeah. that's God. Right, that's right. But that's, you know, a lot of it's likened to a, a, a native tribe somewhere that goes through rituals and dances and all kind of paganistic uh, mm-hmm. motions and movements and emotions to get their God to show up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're kind of doing the same thing in a lot of yeah, churches. Yeah. You know, it's like we got to do this so God will show up. Right. Well, well and, that's saying, num- and that's number three. Well, yeah, but no. what we're saying with that is— yeah. We we've got to we got to do this so that yeah number three God God show up today yeah you know, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah please God or or the equivalent as man God showed up last week mm-hmm. yeah okay right yeah right right again I think I, as Jared Wilson says I think I know what is meant by this phrase um, it's a way of saying we felt emotionally touched during the last worship service which is okay it'd be weird for Christians to never feel engaged emotionally when worship but to say God showed up is not true basically we showed up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> we were. He was always here. Yeah, and so you know, you shouldn't say, "Man, last week God showed up." You say, "Last week, and we really came before Him, and we felt His presence." Mm. Uh, you know, our eyes were opened, our hearts were melted, and we felt God's presence. Not well, God showed up last week because guess you know what you're saying is He may not He may not show up this right. week, yeah. you know, or That's He may not so show true. up next week. <laughs> and 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 also is the mistake that uh, that God needs our worship. Yeah, you know, that, and and it's kind of like God, we're here. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. You should be honored that we should came. Should be impressed that we yeah. showed up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we're here, but it's it's obviously quite the opposite. Yeah. All right, number two, number two, uh, 
going down the list of 10 to 1, the number two thing that Jared Wilson wishes worship leaders would quit saying is, <laughs> let's give God a hand. Translation oh, is, I'd like to hear some applause this <laughs> yeah. morning. You know, yeah. Everybody give God a hand clap. Yeah. Can we do that? Yeah. Why hand pr- clap be- Praise clap. <laughs> praise clap. That's praise it. clap. Let's, let's give God praise a praise clap. clap. Oh, come on. It, it, it's so forced. It's so corny. It's so cheesy. And again, oh, oh, if you're sitting there, our friend Frank Lewis tells us, as we said, statistically, everybody you preach to on Sunday morning, their life will be impacted by cancer or addiction before they die. Themselves or someone they love, someone they care about. People are hurting on Sunday morning. Yeah, yeah. And to have someone who just found out that they have a child who's addicted to opioids, and you say, hey, let's give God a hand clap this morning. You're mm-hmm. forcing him to do something. It's just, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And it doesn't That's honor right. God. And again, yeah. here's, here's the bottom line. You ready? Okay. Turn it up. Listen to this. Turn it up. Great. <laughs> Whatever. Turn it up to number eleven on your on your amp right now, and and listen to this. There's there's one more thing we're going to do. Number one, but before we get to there, all of these have one thing in common. You're asking the congregation to respond to you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. You're coming out there on the platform and you're saying, "How are you all feeling?" Well, yeah, I'm answering your yeah. question. Yeah. Are you all glad to be here? I'm answering your mm-hmm. question. Uh, you know, can I, would you sing louder? I, we answer you. Would you, you know, all of that stuff is asking them to respond to you. We are not in worship to respond to a person. Mm. We're in worship to respond to God, and we do yes. that through his word. Amen. So I really do believe the first thing we should do in worship is read scripture. Yeah. And that lets us know. Now, you may have to come in and, and do some housekeeping. You do some welcome, some greetings, some announcements, and then you take a few moments, sort of clear the plate. And then I think the first thing that should happen in worship is someone stands and reads the scripture. Yeah. A call to worship because now we're we're called to respond to him, not to a worship leader who says, How you doing? How you feeling? How about those chiefs? You know, it's great weather we got today. We just fill it up with nonsensical stuff that has nothing to do with God or who he is. Well, and you know what? It's uh, it seems to me the best worship leaders are those that are very intentional to try to actually be unnoticed. Yes. In fact, like your job to lead us isn't to be the center of attention. It's actually to disappear right. because you've led the people. This is where, like, you go to, you know, some uh, older churches, especially in some other traditions, and the choir was in the back. Yeah, and the organist was too. That's right. You know why? Because they're not the focus. Right. They are leading the choir leads the congregation in praise. And so this is a huge issue in evangelicalism. Yeah, and, you it know, just I'm, is. I get all kinds of people pushing back. Things. He's just an old curmudgeon. I, so many times I go to a, and you know, basically almost any church you go to today, this is what it's going to look like. And it, you guys probably just need to tell me, Clifton, you just need to chill out. <laughs> all right? You're just too wound up, too tight. Go do something else. But I walk into a church many times. Let's say I'm a, an unchurched person. I'm walking into a church. And oftentimes, the, the first thing that catches my eye and the biggest thing I see on the stage is a trap set, a drum mm-hmm. trap set mm-hmm. with the drum cage around it. Huge, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Like, do they really need all of that for, you know, <laughs> thing? but it's all there. And it's not like – that's what – I don't know. Maybe it's more than – I don't know. But visually, it just says – mm-hmm. and it's up there all the time, this huge jap, trump, tr- drum trap set with the drum uh, kit around it, you know, the drum mm-hmm. – what do you call that? Cage. Well, it's the cage, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah the drum, drum cage. cage, yeah. And a lot of times you don't have any pulpit at all. Mm-hmm. So all you right. see up there is just a bunch of music stands and that big. And, oh, this is a band. This is. It's like you know we're not we're more than yeah. I don't know. That's neither here nor there. Okay, let's go down. Number we'll go ten to one, and then okay, we'll go number okay, one. Okay, number okay. ten once again. Ten things Jared Wilson wishes you would quit saying. As, <laughs> yeah, as let's a, blame him. Well, it's in his <laughs> blog. Are we having fun this morning? How's everybody feeling? Number nine. You can do better than that. Number eight. I can't hear you. Number seven. Well, here's an old one. Number six. Man, this is some rock and worship today. Number five. <laughs> Lord, we invite you to be here. Number four. Man, God showed up. Number three. Number two. Let's give God a hand praise. And then number one thing we wish people. And man, I mean this. I. I. Oh man, quit saying this. Turn to your neighbor and say whatever. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Uh, there's really nothing wrong with this approach, except it's a socially awkward for any introvert. Yep. Uh, yeah. This kind of instruction is a huge heaping bowl 
a panic attack soup for an introvert. <laughs> and you got someone who comes in there, and again, they're, they're new to church. They've never been in church much. What are they going to say to somebody? It's just not, it's a, again, it's forced. It's not mm-hmm. natural. Mm-hmm. Turn well, to somebody I, and say whatever. And in my church, if I, wherever I go to, usually where I sit in church, if, and the, we do this. We're told, oh, you know, go, you know, go greet your neighbor. Mm-hmm. So we're so, well, I have to walk four or five pews <laughs> to yeah. find somebody to shake their hand. Well, yeah. I, I am such an introvert. Uh, sometimes I, I kind of wander, wander around in the hallway till the welcome moment is over <laughs> so I don't have to. Well, I, the other thing, can I say something about yeah. this real quick? Go ahead. The other thing is th- num- this really depends on first on who you are. Mm-hmm. And and the congregation and the tradition. So, like a lot of our African American brothers, that's true. This is very common. That's true. Turn to your neighbor and say this, or yeah. you say, and it's not weird at all. Like right. if, you, if Clifton, right, right, if you right, were there, right. you would be, you'd love it. Right. So a part of it is, don't force it. I mean, it's we're getting back to be authentic, be mm. who you are, and don't force this stuff because you're right. It can be incredibly awkward. Well, I think <laughs> I think more than turn to your neighbor and say something is let's take a few minutes and greet one another, get up and say hi to somebody. I, I, I do just you think, guys, do you not have any kind of greeting thing in your church? What do you mean greedy? What do you mean? Uh, like I don't know, just like hey, say hi to one another. Do you have any kind of like greeting? No, we, time? we don't talk to each other at all when we <laughs> come in. <there. laughs> no. I'm we, just what you so you know, so it's basically just no, no. What we do is uh, at, at, at Linwood, we we have a time at the very beginning where we welcome people and glad you're here. Yeah. But what we and then and then usually what happens is after we do those initial things, uh, Howie, our, our pastor, one of our pastors, yeah. they'll sit down on the front yeah. row. And for about thirty minutes, thirty seconds to a minute, there'll be total silence. Gotcha. Okay. Just gives us a chance to kind of catch our yep, breath. Yep. And then the first thing that happens is someone comes up and reads a call to gotcha. worship, reads the scripture. Okay. Now we're moving into worship. But here's what happens: our sanctuary is connected to our big, you know, greet kind of your fellowship. Our kind of fellowship. Area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have coffee and donuts. Okay. So that's going right. on. So we have yeah. coffee and donuts 30 minutes before worship. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's all going on before gotcha. worship. Yep. So in that way, yeah, we have a lot of time to mingle and greet because cool. it's in the same room. Yeah. And then when it's time to worship, we all move into the sanctuary. I got you. No, that's you do a greeting time? We, oh yeah, we do. But that's also part of the culture of our church. I mean, this mm-hmm. is why I would say how you do, so much of this is how you do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So we lean into it, but that's the culture of Calvary. Well, that's we, because that's who you are. That's who I am. Right. So we we would rather err on the side of man. We're gonna go. We are gonna take that risk. Yeah. You know, I tell people, you know, man, you guys are so huggy and stuff. I said, listen, for every one or two people who th- feel that, there's 99 or 98 that say, I've never felt so loved. Mm. All right, good, good point. For you. Well, All we right. like to have our visitors stand up and introduce themselves. That's right. So we can put the rev- oh, ribbon man. on. Visitor it says, ribbon first on time it. visitor. Did your churches do that? Oh, Seriously? all the time when I was a kid. Ago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they did. Man. Hey, thank you for being with us today, uh, and hope you've enjoyed this rather humorous approach, but mainly. Help your worship team, worship leaders understand. We don't. You don't want the people responding to you. Want them responding to God. You don't want to do anything cheesy and silly, and anything that's just words that don't mean anything. Empty phrases you say week after week that people don't listen to anyway. Hey, I got an idea. How about reading scripture between mm-hmm. songs? Oh, there's. A, How about there's pointing a, people to God idea. between songs? All right. All right. Thanks there's, a lot. All right. Thanks for joining us today on Revitalize and Replant. This podcast is brought to you by the North American Mission Board, where we help dying or struggling churches regain health for the glory of God and the good of their communities. If you found this conversation helpful, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform. To learn more about becoming a replanting pastor or to explore resources about revitalization for your own church, visit churchreplanters.com.